today we are going to test another interesting FNI or SI device. I have already a lot of them because I think they are providing really good quality for a rather budget price. By the way, this one I got for free. Most of the other devices I had to pay, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to let you know my honest opinion on that anyway. So here we have the DPS 150. It's a universal DC power supply. It can provide up to 30 volts and up to 5 amps, which makes it up to 150 watts power. That's quite a lot for such a small device. And we do not only get the device itself in the package, we get also this 100 watts power supply, which we of course need to power this device. And we get also a USB C to C power cable. And so let's open the box to see what we get. Comes nicely protected. Small instructions manual, quality control. And then here we have the device. Watch how small this is. And it comes even with this flippable screen. So we can use it in pretty much any angle. As you can see, it has a nice hold. It's not a touch screen. We have the menu buttons here and underneath we get some cables usb a to micro usb and then we get the plus and the minus alligator to banana plug i think they are really really nice good quality something which we can really use and so i have here a quick comparison regarding the size till now this one has been my normal standard universal dc power supply of course, it can deliver up to 300 watts, has a built-in transformer, connects directly to 110 volts, but watch how small this thing is compared to this really large one. So if you're good with 100 watts, then this could be an awesome option, saving so much space and weight. You can even use it for travel, have it always with you. This one definitely not a travel size. Power supply comes with a really interesting plug. That's definitely a recessed European plug, but we can still use that in the US. We have to just push here and then slide it to the side. And then we have this flip plug here. Yeah, super interesting construction. The only drawback with that is that it's only 100 watts. So this one can provide up to 150. So if you really want to provide 150 watts with this power supply, then you need also 150 watts here. Usually maximum which you can get from USB is 140 watts. And so we can also use this normal DC connector. If you have some DC power supply with 150 watts, the maximum input on USB, I don't know, but it's PD triggering anyway. So this device decides what it takes. So you don't have to be worried about that. By the way, there's a small switch here, which you have to slide to the side. By default, it's on PD. So if you are connecting it to DC, you have to switch the slider to the other side. And so I'm plugging in the power supply. For 100 watts, we can either use USB C1 or C2. It doesn't matter, both have 100 watts maximum. Of course, you can also use USB A, but there we won't have 100 watts. And so we plug it in here in the back and so we get the power instantly really nice beautiful display really good visibility if you need a larger screen or more details you can also connect it to your computer I think for that we are using this USB port here it's a micro USB and so you can see regarding power supply when we have the switch on the wrong side I push this to DC, then we don't have any power. So if you don't have any power, check this switch here. And so I switched over to my tech bench and I've attached here 140 watts power supply, but it still shows 20 volts. So probably we can't use more than 100 watts from USB. We will have to switch to DC power, but I'm not going to test here maximum power. By the way, here for these tests, I'm not going to use this FNI RSI voltmeter, which I'm usually using. And I install something, I totally rely on this one. But of course, here I want to show a more independent test. And so let's use the original bias here. The red one on the left side. Unfortunately, I pressed here on the home button. And it looks like everything is in Chinese now. So I'm using the translator. 
one step on the right side seems to be the system settings and so i think we can go down here chinese english so let's go back now we are in english again so now going back to the normal video recording so here we have the home button you can see we have the power setting we have the system settings language theme brightness volume metering and we have the about in the power we have some protection settings like for over voltage over current over power over temperature and so on so i'm not changing that maybe under voltage let's see and to set a specific voltage we can click here can change that with this really nice wheel watch how nicely we can change that so let's go with 10 volts amps don't matter here for a voltmeter you also have nice display for the temperature and a good indicator what the status is so here it's in the stop mode so to start we can start this here so watch the voltmeter when i start it here you can see it goes instantly to 10 volts you also see the blue power icon and now let's stop it again and goes back to pretty much zero also nice indicator here so we see that it's powered let's also see if we can start it right from here and then switch the voltage yeah really nice you can see watch the thing here we even have this nice display where you can see a decent chart of the voltage increasing here you can see side by side left what i'm doing right side how it's reacting really really nice of course here maximum is 20 volts because we are also getting 20 volts from the input and let's test this as a usb power source and so let's consume some power we can see 0 0.74 here a little bit higher of course there's some loss here in between but we can increase that so you can see i think we have set the maximum to one amp so it has been definitely sticking to the one amp maximum which we provided here so let's increase that to two amps possible and so let's see with the maximum of two amps what i noticed is that i tried with this 140 watt usb power supply and it didn't really work for this device for whatever reason so let's continue with this test here two amps maximum increasing here you can see we are very close to one amp everywhere now two amps what i see now that this one here shows more than two amp no matter how much we are getting but we get also confirmation here that we are below two amps even when we are going a little bit higher so it never goes above two amps we can see that here exactly two amps a little bit lower here but still pretty close what's also nice here is that we have different groups where we have some presets you can see different groups here and so let's do our last test that's the ripple current fni rsi is claiming that they provide very high quality power with a low ripple current below 20 millivolts so i'm testing this here with five volts and the result is absolutely amazing we can see it's stable at around four millivolts even much much lower and it's not only super low but it's also stable with a lot of devices we have high variability of the ripple current here absolutely stable and super super low i think the lowest i've ever seen on five volts so definitely confirmation that we have a really good quality power supply and because of the 5 volt minimum voltage protection i wanted to see if we can even use lower voltage than 5 volts so i have reduced it to 4 volts of course i cannot go much lower because i have some usb devices here but i wanted to show if it's really providing some power and not only voltage and so here you are at 4 volts and i've started it and you can see we have the same thing here of course a little bit loss from the cable and here we have same thing and we are definitely using the power of course we have loss through the whole system here 
that's normal but we can see we have definitely power here so for me it really looks like we can use 0 to 30 volts at least when we are using 30 volts also as input and we can use between 0 and 5 amps output yeah really nice device love the display also how easy it is to use i haven't been reading really in the instructions manual just push a little bit around long press short press these things and everything worked pretty much right from the beginning and so if you're interested i'll put down the link to the amazon listing down into the description so you can check it out and order one for you if you like it and i hope i've been able to help you a little bit with this video if you have any questions or comments or want to share your own experience with this device then just let us know down in the feedback area i'm always happy to talk about these things and if you like the video give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel thanks for watching see you next time